This is Crystal Fenn from MedPage Today. I'm talking with Dr. Deacon Lee from Kaiser Permanente about his study suggesting too much caffeine in pregnancy may increase risk of miscarriage, which was published by the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Dr. Lee, you reported about a doubling in risk of miscarriage for women who consume 200 milligrams of caffeine a day or more. How much is that in real-world terms, say at Starbucks? Uh, I actually don't know exactly what is the... Um caffeine concentration in Starbucks because it varies a little bit from brand to brand. Um, generally speaking, the, the 200 milligram uh, is equivalent to one and a half cup to two cup. Here we're talking about the cup size as a seven and a half ounce, the regular uh, cup. Um, f as far as uh, um, uh, caffeinated soda also varies a lot. In fact, it varies more than coffee because some uh, soda adds uh, caffeine. If you're talking about the traditional soda like uh, Coca-Cola or uh, Pepsi, uh, it's probably roughly equivalent to uh, five to seven uh, cans of 12-ounce uh, uh, soda. What about some of the other things you looked at, like tea and hot chocolate? Yeah, hot chocolate has a very, very uh, small uh, uh, amount of uh, um, caffeine. Uh, it's uh, roughly about uh, two to three percent uh, caffeine compared to uh, regular caffeine. Uh, tea is about 25 to to 30 percent, roughly around there. Of course, varies by type of tea. Um, and roughly around yeah, 30 percent of the regular coffee. Okay. Some previous studies have also found increased risk of miscarriage with a high caffeine intake in pregnancy. So why has there been so much controversy over whether the risk is real? The controversy has been uh, because there was argument whether uh, it was really due to caffeine itself that, that we observed that the association, or whether it's due to healthy women reduced their caffeine intake during pregnancy, which made it look like there is difference between the woman, difference in caffeine intake between women with or without a miscarriage. You know, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, 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 so the, the the argument was if healthy woman tends to reduce their caffeine drink during pregnancy due to nausea and vomiting, we call it a caffeine aversion. Then you will artificially see uh, the difference between women without with with or without the miscarriage. So that has been an argument. So the association was there, but the interpretation has been difficult. So that's why so far. There was no strong recommendation what the woman should do with regard to caffeine uh, drinking during pregnancy. So what we did with this study was not only we confirmed caffeine was associated with increased risk when you have high dose greater than 200 milligram. So we decided to address that uh, issue by do two things. One is we control those factors that we would have led women to reduce their caffeine drinking like nausea, vomiting. And the better yet, we decided to identify group women who never changed their caffeine drinking pattern during pregnancy. So within this group woman, the argument about that the association was due to some woman reduced their uh, um, caffeine drinking during pregnancy does not apply in this group woman. So that we said, okay, let's look at whether caffeine still increased risk of miscarriage within this group of women. Sure enough, we still saw that the, within this group of women who never changed their caffeine drinking during pregnancy still saw that the uh, caffeine drinking increased the risk of miscarriage. That's what we think is the key. So hopefully our study will remove the uncertainty and put this argument to the rest. So it is likely it's not the ex some woman reduced drinking in pregnancy is not likely the explanation for the observed association. Based on the risks you found, do you recommend that patients stay away from caffeine entirely during pregnancy, or is a moderate amount okay? Well, based, I, I'm as a researcher, I'm going to base on my findings. Each individual woman and the doctors, particularly doctors, professional society, would have to look at the whole body of literature and come up with their recommendations, particularly with the, our new evidence. 
and women would have to based on their own situation including many other factors for example their age whether they also have other risk factors whether they had a miscarriage before but from a researcher point of view based on my finding uh, I would and our findings show that if you drink more than 200 milligram you definitely you, you had you know double the risk but even lower we had some increased risk but not statistically significant that means we don't have enough confidence to rule out that might be due to chance given that the background i think uh, um, women probably better off for the women who are pregnant and women who are actively seeking being pregnant should consider uh, stop uh, drinking coffee uh, if possible because i don't see much downside by stopping drinking coffee and at least in the first three months uh, uh, hopefully throughout the pregnancy if they really have to drink, they should limit their drink to one, or at the most, two cups of regular coffee a day. What can women who rely on that morning cup of coffee do during pregnancy? Right. I mean, they can, uh, depends on what the really they need from the regular coffee they have been drinking right now. If it's really caffeine, another way to do is tea. Tea has much lower uh, amount of caffeine in there. Uh, but if they really, some women just wanted to taste or smell the coffee. If that's the case, switch to decaf. Decaf has much lower uh, amount of caffeine, but they still have the similar smell or taste. That that might be the way to go. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I'm Crystal Fenn, MedPage Today. You're welcome.